Cord Noir. And the recording is in progress, and uh, we don't have a lot of people today. Jeez. Uh, well, they'll probably all show up eventually. So, hi, welcome to our Monday show, the uh, the pop up show, and uh, we uh, let's admit the people who were there already. Okay, here they come. Here's Paul Eleven, and uh, there's Charlene Solis, and there's Edward Berger, and there's Len Lafrisco, and now we got to admit Marjorie Miller uh, and Brian Neary. Uh, let me see here. There we go. Yeah, people starting to join. Boy, the weather has been really strange lately, I think. More strange than usual. Uh, I am so sick. I don't know about you guys. I am so sick of the humidity now that I, I, I get up every morning. I'm in an air-conditioned room. And then I, I get out of that air conditioned room and I go into the bathroom and it's like a steam bath in there. So, you know, it just doesn't get any better. How is it where you guys are? How's the weather out there, Paula? It's beautiful. Um, I mean, we've had a couple of reverses, but overall we've had a really, I, I feel really lucky this summer based on what, what I hear from other places. Yeah, um, it's it's uh, today. It's um, the sky is clearing. It started out cloudy, but the sky is clearing, and it's um, it's in the seventies, and it's lovely. And that's the weather forecast from Ohio. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here now, here's Charlene with the weather. Sunny, <laughs> nice spring, almost like a spring day. Seventy-five. Yeah. I mean, how, uh, uh, Len with the weather. 80, 85, 29% humidity, beautiful sun. Beautiful sun. See, it, it's not that way here. Uh, 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 Brian, with the weather forecast, with the weather? Yeah, same as Len. Uh, yeah, of course. Same <laughs> area. It's just a I'm an hour away from driving, so. Yeah, although, you know, in the Bay Area, it can change. I mean, I used yeah. to be like oh, yeah. really cool in San Francisco, and you go out to Contra Costa, oh, yeah. sweltering. <laughs> It's it's 86 here, and then at home I just checked, and it's 81. So it's like five degree difference. But yeah, if it's hot, you just go over to Santa Cruz or up to San Francisco. If it's like 100 degrees here, yeah. Are you in your office now? Yes, in Lodi today. Yes, in Lodi is is that your? Do you have a fancy office? No. Do you have a, do you no. have an office with a window? <laughs> we we this is like a this is a focus room. So I can focus. <laughs> well, I see. But your office. What is your office like? Do you? Uh, My office you, is in Sunnyvale, and it, it's nice. It's okay. I mean, do they give you little amenities like an extra roll of tape or something? Yeah, I used to have a lot of stuff. Uh, yeah, microwave and uh, uh, refrigerator because they want you to stay there all day and work. <laughs> so. <laughs> But here, here we start, here Lodi is different. We don't really have offices. We have a few directors, but if if I if I change my position here, then I'll get one. But for right wait, now, wait, I, I wait don't. Minute, wait a minute. Even though you're in Lodi, which is more of a business facility or whatever, okay, yeah. Do you have snacks? I'm not paid for, but I I know the people to get them if I want them. <laughs> so you have snacks, okay. Marjorie, well, here's Marjorie with the weather. It's raining. <laughs> thunder. We saw that last night, yeah. Yeah, thunder. It's raining now. Oh. I had to close the windows. Well, you know what she does? She always leaves the windows open, even though it says the weather forecast is rain. <laughs> you know, uh, and she really should just close them all. I mean, I, I have one in the uh, guest room. And I pretty much keep that closed all the time because you just never know. See, we have two kinds of what is rain. We have the kind that goes straight down, and that's fine. And then we have the other kind that hits the window like crazy. And that's the kind that if you don't get to it fast enough, you've got a flood going. You know, I think the first time it ever happened to Yes, Paula. Yeah, I, saw, I wanted to mention, and in terms of the weather, I saw um, on MSNBC this morning a beautiful uh, skyline. Um, of of uh, of Manhattan mm -hmm. because the whole subject. If, if, are you, if you're hearing noise, I don't know if you can hear that. There's uh, uh, motorcycles that go past my window. Yeah. Uh, um, but the, there was a beautiful skyline, uh, 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 and they were talking, of course, about 9/11. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And, and it, it was like a sunrise and it was gorgeous. So I guess the, I guess the rain must've come later, but it was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, but the rain uh, is here and uh, the thunder was here uh, sometimes without the rain everywhere, but here. And, uh, yes. Let's go to Charlie for the weather forecast in Texas. We haven't seen a drop of rain since mid-June, so. (laughs) (laughs) Of course, it's fall weather now. It's 96. (laughs) Now, you're in Austin, right? You're you're in Austin. And, uh, uh, well, I'll get to something in a moment about Austin, but uh, there's only one person we missed with the weather. And so now here with the weather... Is Edward Berger. Edward? It's 82 degrees, and they say there's a flood watch until 5 p.m. <laughs> what? If you had that as your weatherman every day on television, <laughs> that's right. There's no doubt it would be the number one rated newscast <laughs> in the area. I believe that voice. I, you, I believe it too. Absolutely. Yeah. You know. You know, in biotech, we've we've had presenters come through, and we had a Russian presenter from uh, our chemistry group up in Bothell, Washington, and he spoke to us. And when he starts talking about, uh, you know, contamination and all the stuff that's happening with our D- DNA targeting, when you hear a Russian accent, you really believe it. <laughs> right? Is that right, Charlie? Charlie, right? That accent, you could have an American person oh, yeah. saying it, and you just listen, but you hear that accent of Russian and all the stuff going on, and it's really believable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we've been joined by our good friend up there in uh, uh, up in up in Canada, Mike Chisholm. Here's Mike Chisholm with the weather. Hey, everybody. Uh, oh, the weather. Sorry, it's beautiful, and I want to say seventy-one, but I could be wrong. What are you people all having this great? Well, actually, our temperature isn't that high. Seventy-eight, oh, actually. Seventy-eight up here. This is ours is 80. So I think outside of Charlie, who what's yeah. the temperature now where you are? 96. Boy, that you you finally <laughs> went under a hundred. Yeah. That's what I said. It's fall weather. It's cool. It's wild. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it didn't nothing happen uh with uh uh with the weather and with Charlie. It's a little better. Here it's still. I don't know. It's just, and it's not, it's not the 80 degrees. That would be fine. I could live with that. It's the humidity. We go out into our, um, we close the door between the, the back of the house and the front part of the apartment. And the front part, you open up that door and it's like going into a jungle, you know? <laughs> uh, so, I mean, it, it's, it's not fun. How, how's the temperature up there in uh, Connecticut? Uh, Jeff, um, it is nice now. However, it's looking like it might do it again tonight. Yeah, yeah. It's been and and, and we go down to the wonderful blurred out background of uh, <laughs> Vernon Nunn. Hello, Vernon. Howdy. <laughs> how's the how's the weather down there in Kentucky? It's actually not too bad today. I took the dog for a walk. It was in the high 60s and overcast, so it was very pleasant. You took the dog out for Chinese food? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, you know, you know they do eat dog. <laughs> <laughs> they actually walk dog. Yeah. They walk dogs, yeah. So when you say you walked your dog, I began to think, ah, oh, maybe he's <laughs> having Chinese yeah. dinner tonight. Did you get my video? Yes, I got your video. He sent me a video. I can't play it here because we're going straight out over over uh, Zoom. But he sent me uh, videos of the whales that he videoed when he was on his trip to Alaska. Wow. Oh, gorgeous. Wow. Wonderful. They were wonderful. Uh, that, that You took that great tour. Everybody tells me the Alaska tour is the best cruise to take anywhere you agree with that brian yeah i i haven't gone yet i want to go really bad this uh one of my engineers i worked with was naval and he said i traveled all over the world and the most beautiful area was alaska like that 
Yeah. And you don't think of it, Alaska as being that right. beautiful. But supposedly, it's, I mean, Shecky, before he left us, said to me, if you ever take any cruise, take that Alaskan cruise. Hmm. He I did say something mistake. about the penguin shit. No, no, no. That, that was, was the Antarctica. Arctic. That was the that Arctic. Was Antarctic. <laughs> now, I have Arctic. looked. We can go to the Arctic. It's 12000 a person. But we can go to the Arctic and smell the penguin shit. <clears throat> Antarctic. Go to the zoo. It's Antarctic, <laughs> excuse me. Yeah, I, I was mistaken about that small cruise ship, uh, Alex. The uh, the Silver Sea Muse has a maximum passenger load of 595. I think yeah. I had said two something. Th that one down to Antarctica was, as I remember, quite small, according to him. True. Uh, and I don't know the reason why. Maybe not everybody wants to go to the Antarctic. <laughs> you know. That could be. But they go down there and they uh, you go on the on shore and there are all the penguins are pooping. So, yeah. you know, uh, but he 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 enjoyed that, except for the fact that that's one of the places his health took a turn for the worse. And he had to be, I don't know, not airlifted, but had to be taken to a hospital in Chile, maybe. Uh, yeah. And uh, he wound up in the hospital for a couple of days and it couldn't finish the tour. Luckily, he had the insurance. Oh. So what was a. I think he said to me a $30,000 cruise. Wow. Turned out to be cost him nothing. But uh, the reason it was 30,000 is he'd always get a room for two because mm -hmm. he and, and so he'd have a large room and could be alone. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, in fact, he invited me to go on that one. And I didn't go because I know Marjorie would be very mad at me if I went anywhere without her. So, you know, I said, no. look at look at her face. She's getting sad already. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you you know where I have to take her again, I have to take her back to uh, where, where was it? Uh, Sienna, 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 because mm. that's where she couldn't get out of the hotel room because of her back. Mm. And finally, I put she got on crutches and I took her to the car and I drove her in to the old town of Siena, but only as far as we could go by car. So she, and she, all she could do, all he could do was look out the window, right? Yeah, and I stayed at the hotel and you said you would bring me back. I would bring you back. So I'm, we'll, we'll go back there. What the hell? It's, it's easy enough, you know, it's in Tuscany. It's a beautiful place to go. And uh, we'll get a villa there. How's that? Definitely. Maybe we'll get two <laughs> villas, one for each of us. Go next April. I plan to be in that area myself. So, oh, well, good. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, we'll plan it. You know, <laughs> I feel like you're it's in a Seinfeld full. episode. Tuscany's full. Yeah. Tus yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tuscany's full. <laughs> but I, uh, uh, you know, I, uh, we, uh, every time I look at these villas, you know, it always says holds eight or holds 12. Yeah. Uh, and I go, I, well, I got to start inviting people. They just come if they want to, you know, uh, because we're going to rent it anyway. But if it's that big, we're going to feel very lonely. Plus, mm. we need somebody who can drive cars and go everywhere with us. So <laughs> I know, I know. I, I, I've got you down already, you know. Good, good, good. Even on the couch, I'm fine. Yeah. Um, uh, by the way, where was it? I was looking at uh, some old cars and so on. And I'll, I thought of you, and and you're you're like a, you're you're a real car guy. Like yeah, since about, like three years old. An understatement. Well, what yeah. car, well, no, what cars do you have? You have a. I like Cadillacs. The ones I've been building are Cadillacs. So I'm building a 1934 Cadillac right now. Really? Yeah. I mean, do you literally? Are you a grease monkey? You get under the chassis and. <laughs> I used to do a lot more, but now I do. I do. I still do a lot of the work, but I have. I just write the check. <laughs> I have guys that have. <laughs> no, I have guys because I have friends that are so such experts at it, you know, and they want to help me out. So I, I try to do a, and mock up stuff as much as possible, and then they'll come back and finish everything up for me. But you say you you say you um, uh, you're restoring like a what a thirty four Cadillac, right? Yeah, and it's very very rare because that's the depression time. Mm -hmm. And this is a sport coupe with a with the option of a golf club door. So, if of a what? the guy of a what? golf club door. 
So on the side of the car behind the, the front door, behind the door, there's a small door for the gentleman to put his golf clubs in. So it means during the depression, this was like his second car that he would go out with the boys and go golfing. And then he would have a big Cadillac for like his family. So uh, pretty wealthy people who owned these cars back then. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So it's really unique, really cool. How, how much does it, how much is it going to cost you to restore? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> what do you, you know? know? So he's trying know, to say his wealthy people still own those cars. I want to know how much <laughs> FU money you have. Come on. Uh, how much is it going to cost you to restore that Cadillac? Probably well, it, a lot of changes, but probably uh probably like 120. Pretty inexpensive. 120,000? Yeah, it's pretty inexpensive. Because these cars, yeah, usually they're That's pretty inexpensive. Some, okay. Yeah. Some, <laughs> but it's like payment plan, you know, it's like slow, slow chunks going along the way. So it's like, okay, so a little funny. bit here, a little bit there. So how long is it going to take you to put this whole car back together? It'll be another year till it's complete. Oh, so that's over 12 months. Oh, well, that's only ten thousand a month. So you know. No, 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 no. I already spent a lot of money on this. <laughs> you what? I've already spent a lot of money on it. Oh, I see. Okay. But now it's just like the last 30. And when you're through with it, do you sell the thing? I, I probably will eventually, but yeah. You got to go. You got to. I've had offers of the car already at 100,000, like it is right now. Mm. Like it is right now. Oh, oh as yeah. is. Wow. Is that, is that without golf clubs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I actually found them on eBay. Uh, I got a set with the, with the hickory wood. You know, as the shaft, so it's pretty uh, cool. What was the other? What was the other um, um, car? What's the other car you have that's uh, like the the one you drive around a lot? McLaren. <laughs> the McLaren. The McLaren. McLaren. Now, what? It, explain what a McLaren is, because how many people know what a McLaren is? So you, it, I it, know, it, everybody it, knows. Oh, yeah. yeah, half the guys <laughs> and not any of the women. <laughs> the more affordable. It's a more portable and more practical Lamborghini or Ferrari. It's a more portable and it's more a practical. More, more practical. Right. How's it more practical? Uh, it's less expensive. It's just as powerful and it's uh, more comfortable inside. You know, the worst car I have ever ridden in, in Lamborghini is a Lamborghini. Lamborghini. Yeah. yeah. It, those are really rough rides. My friend Paul had a business partner who, as a gift, Gave him his old Lamborghini. Mm -hmm. So we took that Lamborghini on a ride. He had a Ferrari and I rode in that. And it was okay. The, the comfort's pretty good in a Ferrari. Right. We go up in the Lamborghini from Sacramento to Lake Tahoe. Oh. I swear to you, I was never so glad to get out of a car in my life. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a what? How much is a Lamborghini? Uh, what was it? An L something or a... What are the what's the one of the models? Name some of the models of the uh, around that time, probably Countach or Diablo. Or, Diablo. Uh, it was a Diablo. Tell them how much the Diablo costs. Now they're like two hundred and fifty to yeah, oh. they're, they're they're pretty up there right now. This is about two hundred and fifty thousand when I wrote in. Yeah, yeah, brand new. Yeah, brand new back then. And there was a little funnel to put your luggage in. I mean, there was yeah. no room, you know, I mean, it was, it was the most impractical car you could ever own. And you would think as a car like that was meant for long trips, you know, because it has a very sporty, it's a sporty car. Uh -huh. And you think, oh, the smaller the car, the nicer, you know, I found the best cars to take long trips in were like really expensive, big cars. Uh -huh. Because it was like driving in a living room. Yep. You know? Yeah, my friend has a four-door, I don't know what it is, a spur, a uh, Rolls Royce. And that thing, yeah, it's like a couch. The seats, the front seats, I sat in it. And it's, you know, they're like, they're like cushions, like off of your, you know, yeah. sofas. Because I had a Nissan 300Z. <laughs> and, if, when I, and I also had an Acura, I guess the highest uh, top of the line Acura. You had an uh -huh. NSX? No, no, no like, that's it. a sports car. Yeah. A legend or something? Oh no, no, it was a, T, a, T, a TL. Yes, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. something. I see. That's how much I care about cars. I just said, "Oh, that one looks good," you know. And we <laughs> leased that one. And I got to tell you, whenever I go on a long trip, I take the Acura. Oh yeah, 
you know, because it was just more comfortable during the whole all, all the way. It's like, as I say, driving in a living room. So yeah, and then everybody's trying to race me when I drive the McLaren. I want to yeah. ask. I want to ask Marjorie. Who makes that? Who makes a McLaren? I never heard of it. Um, McLaren. McLaren. McLaren does. <laughs> I don't mean. I mean like the country. Oh, it's a uh, British. It's British. Yeah. British. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. only been around for 10 years for the production cars. They were really big in racing before. Uh, so they don't have all the, you know, all the all the history like Ferrari and Lamborghini. They're celebrating 60 years. So they're like 10 years for production. Because That's I really, uh, you know, I really, uh, uh, I enjoyed the Acura. That was the strange part uh-huh. about it, you know. And, yeah. You know, and when I bought the, when I first bought the 300Z, I, I didn't know what I bought. I just said, I want that. Okay. Uh-huh. And now I'm driving down the street and every kid I drive by is going. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going, okay. <laughs> you know? Alex, do you know who makes Acura? Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's like uh, Toyota or somebody like Honda. Honda. Honda, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, Edward Berger just got a new vehicle. Yeah. What'd you get? Gorgeous. I got a, uh, a Tucson, uh, a Hyundai Tucson. Oh. Tucson? Yeah. Oh, there's a Hyundai Tucson? Yeah. Why do the Japanese name a car after an American city? I have no idea. Yeah, Isn't most of them, they have, the, they have the Santa Fe, they have the Sonata. Yeah. They... Here, here's one that didn't very do very well was the Honda Hiroshima. <laughs> right. <laughs> Marjorie, oh, what was the most expensive car you ever owned? Mustang. Mustang convertible. Yeah. That was cool. I think. What year was that? Like when the year it came out. Oh yeah, yeah. I had a bunch of Mustangs in high school. Yeah, they're very easy to work on. Great. I had a Mustang convertible too. Yeah. 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 I found it. it, I found it after a while impractical, especially when I moved to Houston, Texas. I traded it in for a hardtop because it was so unrelentingly hot down there Mm -hmm. that I had to have the air conditioning on all the time. So why get something where you take the top down? You know. So, but I owned, I think my first three, uh, my, I owned three Mustangs during the run of the Mustangs. Oh. I owned, uh, uh, my first one was uh, a, a green Mustang. It was like the second year the Mustangs were out. Uh-huh. And then uh, I got, I uh, got the convertible uh-huh. and then I got the, uh, the hard, uh, the second hard top with the air conditioning, you know? Mm-hmm. So, uh, it was it was a, that was in the days when you didn't you didn't get built in air conditioning. You had to have the air conditioner under the uh, under the dash. Oh yeah. Remember those? Yeah. 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 Okay. So my, my friend not- has a, my friend has a car show a uh, show car and he has he has the swamp cooler on the side of the window. Hmm? You know where you used to put ice and then the hot air would come in and then blow really? through the ice and then <laughs> yeah. into the car. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Marjorie, uh, you so you, but you like you always talk very fondly of your Mustang. Yeah, I loved it. It was great. Yeah, it was a great idea. I mean, yeah. when it first came out. Do you know how much those things were when they first came out? I want to say like twenty four hundred. I mean, it was so cheap. Yeah, yeah. I remember eighteen hundred. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, and, and this was yellow other... with black interior. Well, the other thing convertible. That... The other thing that it had that no other cars had at that time was it had carpeting. Mm. And you went, well, carpeting? Oh, wow. You know, they, they did little things to make it look lush without having to make a car that was lush. Because mm-hmm. how much is carpeting going to cost you to put in? But it's a, it, it just gives it a nice feel. And the leather seats. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, now they do that the pickup trucks where they're totally luxurious and have mm. wood grain and leather everywhere and mm. and now they charge you a hundred thousand, right? Yeah. Mike, what was your Bronco? I mean, those things are same same thing, right? Those used to be just nothing inside. Now they're all luxurious, probably. Yeah, and I got the I got the one with the most creature comforts. Um, so I paid eighty eight for mine, and then I went and spent probably seven customizing it after after yeah. i got it so yeah. yeah and those are really nice inside and everything so now just even the farm trucks from back then now they're all really nice and luxurious you know i i don't i haven't owned a car in 15 years i mean marjorie tell them do we need a car you don't need a car in fact it's probably a bad thing to have a car because you got to 
put in a garage, which is then going to charge you 500 a month. Uh-huh. And then you've got to pay insurance. It's been up because you have a car in New York City. And then on top of that, you have a car. What was the other element that made it very expensive to have? You know, insurance? You pay for parking, oh. right? What about parking? Oh, right? yeah, yeah. well, the car yeah. payment. Car payment. Right. Uh, and Do you remember the Seinfeld where they used to park on one side of the street and then everybody would have to move their cars onto the other side of the street? <laughs> they still, the street have, that. They they still, still have, have that. Alternate that. side of the street parking. Really? They had oh, that in Chicago. Yeah. Wow. They had that in San Francisco mm. where they had different parking for different they go out and Move your car because it's a different day. But, you mm. know, I paid $80 a month for a garage in my building and so it wasn't a big deal. Yeah. I pay three hundred and fifty dollars a month yeah, for my car to park it. Yeah, well, I was here in New York. I'm talking about yeah. San Francisco. You know, so I mean, it it it, it, it it's so by the time you're through with it, you've got an expense of at least a thousand dollars a month, including the payment late. You know, uh, added on with the payment added yeah. on. And you hardly are ever going to use it. What you're going to you take only it need out of a car in New York to get out to get, get out. out of New York? Yeah, but I mean, where would we go? <laughs> well, <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah. We don't know anyone. Jeff, in fact, go see, Jeff. You can come or go see go see Edward. You got friends, we've got friends who've got cars, or uh, uh, Jeff can come in and see us and drive us out of town. That's right. See, see. But I tell you what, I don't want to take a car in the, in the city anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. you take the train, I'll pick you up where the train stops. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. No, but you're absolutely right. You know, I mean, it, it's just crazy. You don't need to do that. It's so, nuts. It's nuts. Yeah. New York, you, you just want don't want to have a car. What the hell? You know. Yeah. When I was going to San Francisco a lot, we we always had one parking lot, and we'd always park there, no matter what club or what parties we were going to. We'd always park at that this one lot, and then we'd take a cab. You know, there was an Uber there, but we'd take cabs everywhere because we knew how to get in and out of that parking lot really quick. You know, it's mm. not like we'd get lost and going down one way streets in San Francisco. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Alex, yeah. I was coming to see you at KITS in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. one morning on ninth street and i was on market turning on to ninth and it says no left turn but i did it anyway you mean at the memorial first... elon musk memorial building <laughs> yeah i got my first uh, ticket right there yeah. <laughs> <Really? you. laughs> yeah well i you know it, uh, uh let's see in the newer building we were in i had, was in a garage what did i do in the older building i think i put it in a lot nearby or something every morning uh-huh. Um, but you know, uh, it's just that here, if you have car in New York, I mean, how often are you going to take it out? And so does that make it worth the cost of having the car? Yeah, it's just better if, you, if you really want to have a car, you rent one. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and overall, if you were to rent them several times a year to go places when you wanted to, it's cheaper. It's not going to come out to as much as you would have paid for that car. Yeah. So. You're and, describing and boats where I live right now. What? You're boats? describing boats where I live right now. Because there's mean? so much there's so much boating that happens here. And <laughs> people are always making the argument, well, should I own it or should I just rent it three times or four times a year? And uh, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, I I uh uh and now I don't even know if I can drive. It's been 15 years. I mean, I've driven. I've, I've rented cars and we've driven. Marjorie, I did okay, didn't I? Yeah, I can't drive. I haven't driven in over 10 years. But I'm just afraid because I'm so lightheaded lately and a little uncoordinated that I'm afraid to drive. Is your license still good? Oh, yeah. It's good for the <laughs> yeah, that's the bad. <laughs> What? What would you say? That's the bad thing. Is, uh... Right. They, they just keep giving you a license and you've ne- you haven't driven in years. You know, the age, I, same thing with me. I'm like, they, sh- they I agree. They should keep testing me. I'm starting to get older well, and same thing. Right. Uh, cars have changed. Yeah. Well, that, that's not what I'm worried changed. about. I can live with the technology. You know, <laughs> I, I had to kind of get used to the fact that the last car I rented, I pushed a button to start the engine. Yeah. 
<laughs> Somehow that wasn't something you did with a car. You yeah. turn the key in the ignition. But here, all you have to do is boom. You know. Press the button. The technology makes you lazy, though, because I have things that tells me where there's cars on the left, there's the right, when I'm doing all these things that I'm doing wrong. And then when I get in a car that doesn't have that, I'm lazy because I don't look in the mirror. I'm looking for the, the camera. I'm looking for it's terrible. You know what? Hey, you know, yeah. we, we have friends who say have cars that are, let's say, five years, three years old. If we bought a car right now, the technology in the car we buy right now is more advanced than the technology that was in that car that was bought three years ago. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, uh, and and so you really got a, a lot a lot of a lot of a lot of things to take into effect there. I don't know. I just I don't know if I could drive or not drive. I think if we go to Europe and we stop at an airport and we got to drive to whatever place we're staying, I suppose I can do that as long as Marjorie keeps poking me to keep me awake. I, I've decided to rent a car. In we were in Italy one it. time and we were driving with with that automatic. The GPS person that tells you how to go. Yeah. We ended up going to somebody's farmhouse. No, no we, wound, we wound up one place where there was nothing around us and nowhere to go forward. Yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, whoever worked on this, uh, well, for instance, San Francisco, I had a GPS in my car, I was had one of the first GPSs. And because I'm always into the new technology and I had to have a GPS and it was a $2,000 add on. And, mm -hmm. and I, don't all cars just have GPS as a matter oh, of, yeah. you know, really? Yeah. 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 But, but everything has car. Yeah. But what happened was, wait, well, let me just tell you what happened. So I got it and all of a sudden I said, I want to go home. So I was downtown, down around the Twi Twitter building, as it were. And uh, which wasn't at that time, it was called the Furniture Mart. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I, I said, take me home. And it took me through every bad neighborhood. In <laughs> <laughs> and I went, there's some guy who's programming this thing who has friends who are ready to mug people as they drive by using that, <laughs> that GPS. Mm -hmm. But it took us through every really bad neighborhood. I'm going, all I had to do is have me go left and up the hill here. And I'm... <laughs> Yeah. they're so slick now mm -hmm. they like react real time to traffic stuff or construction or mm -hmm. if a highway closure happens within three yeah. or four minutes you're up you're being uh rerouted it's crazy yeah well, my new, what were you gonna say i was gonna my new car tells me when there's a red light camera or a speed oh, yeah. camera mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah okay i don't know that see thank you for telling me edward okay what kind of car do you say you got uh, Hyundai Tucson. I got the deluxe model with everything in it. <laughs> it is sweet. Yeah. Does it recognize your voice when you do Siri? <laughs> uh, I don't use that too much. But I know it has voice recognition. It, it, no, it comes with no air conditioning, so you get the full Tucson experience. <laughs> That's right. Like, right. <laughs> Only the heater works. <laughs> mm. yeah, no I, I don't know. I've never been a big guy for cars. I, I, I now the thing with if, I was going to ask Brian this. I said I should talk to him about this the next time we talk. Mm -hmm. And that is everybody I ever knew in the technology business, which is essentially what you're in, right? You know, you're in Silicon Valley, basically. Mm -hmm. They all buy sports cars. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I was with uh, uh, Play Incorporated, everybody, the whole parking lot was nothing but just exotic sports cars. What is it with technology people and their sports cars? That's what I never understood. Have you money? <laughs> yes. Yes. Is that really yeah, it? When, when we when we go to the the cars and coffee and stuff, we see some kids in you know two three hundred thousand dollar cars, and we just shake our heads. We go either daddy's money or tech money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Yeah. Well, a lot of people just rent the cars, release them. They, and these these yeah. kids, they these kids are them. from China. They, their parents give them a whole bunch of money to go to school, and they just give them money, and these kids start popping up with these cars. It, it's really crazy. I mean, when when uh, uh, New Tech existed, all the people in New Tech, the big thing was to go out and buy NSXs, you know, uh, which was a nice car, I have to admit, you know. 
So, I mean, but I only got us into a sports car because I went into a dealership and I looked at all the cars and I said, I like that one. I, this is a time when I didn't worry about money. And I brought my business manager with me so he could sign the check, you know, <laughs> and, and I pointed to a Nissan SX and we said, how much? And he said, so much. Here's a classic story. We say <laughs> how much I know they they said uh, I I think it was twenty eight twenty thirty thousand dollars. Okay, so um, it was on the uh, on the floor. Okay, so um, Gary says to me, my business manager, just play along with me. Okay, <laughs> no, we're not going for uh, for uh, 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 thirty thousand. So the the salesman goes, well, give me a price and I'll go back to my manager and give it to him and see if he'll give it to you for that price. And Gary goes, $15,000. <laughs> and and uh, he goes, I can't tell him that. He said, you said you give me, I give you any price and you go back and ask your manager. So he goes back and comes back. He says, can't do that. He said, okay. Well, how about 27,000? He said, can't do that either. He said, okay, well, nice doing business with you. And I, we start walking out and go, Gary, I want that car. And he goes, just wait, just wait. Because before <laughs> your hand touches the handle on the door, you're going to hear the guy in back of you. Yep. As soon as I put my hand on the door, he says, wait. <laughs> <laughs> he gave it to us for $27,000. Uh, and 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 so uh, that's why I always after that point I always took Gary with me when I was going to go buy a car because I, I'm I, no good at buying a car. I go with my friends all the time. I bought probably 10, 12 cars in the last two years for, for people. I love it. There's nothing more fun. Than <laughs> you love driving the salesman crazy. I love it. I love it. <laughs> but you know the whole the whole business has changed from what I understand is that you go into an average lot now and say you want that fancy nissan sports car or whatever i don't know if they make one anymore uh um, well they do oh yeah. yeah yeah uh and they won't have it in stock you know it, and then if you want it you order it and maybe you'll see it in three months it's not like the days where these places were just flush with product so mm -hmm. you know am i right yeah. has it changed uh, the, 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 <laughs> This is how Len dresses up when he goes helps you buy a car too. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna deal with this guy. He's my guy. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I and I. Nice. <laughs> is that your screensaver now, Brian, or what? Yeah, it was just in case I need help anywhere. I got that though. I'll take twice. Let me ask the guys here with cars and women with cars too, if you know the answer mm. to this one. Would you say if I just bought, bought one car now and forget about the fact I live in New York and it'd be no place to charge it, should I go electric? No. Why? No way. Nope. Too early. I would go. I would go hybrid, and that's and that's what I've got right now because you get the best of both worlds. You get very good gas mileage, and some of them now are plug-in hybrids. So if you're driving around the city, it's like having an electric car. But if you want to make a 500-mile trip. You don't have to worry about stopping to charge it. So hybrid is probably the way to go now. I think so. Pure gas cars, forget it, right? I would. Uh, I just bought a pure pure gas car. <laughs> I don't know that I'll ever buy an electric car. I don't know. I just well, I yeah, I, I wouldn't mind an electric car for for commuting. You know, commute back to to work and back, and then you charge it at night. Back, to, I think that's a great idea, but. Yeah, you, not for every. You you bought uh, one for your wife, right? Yeah. Well, you say that reluctantly. Hey, we always... It's not my wife, but yes. Oh, not my not wife. Excuse me. I always make that mistake. <laughs> the mother of my daughter, yes. The mother of your daughter, and it's not your <laughs> wife yet. Is she ever going to be your wife? Huh? Is she ever going to be your wife, or does she sh say over my dead body? <laughs> uh, after the last month or so, I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> No one hears the fortune teller, Alex. Nobody knows the future. I mean, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't buy your wife a car like she's going to be there forever. Is that your uh, your your advice? Yeah. 
but I, you know, I mean, I, uh, uh, if I were buying a car today, I mean, I would love, I, I love the idea of electric, but the idea that you get maybe 200 miles to the gallon, if you really want to pay real money for one of those cars, 300, not to the gallon, to the charge, yeah, 300 to the charge. And then it still takes you a lot longer to charge it than it's going to take you to stick it's gas in. Gas, yeah. And it's expensive to charge those things. I talked to some guy that was going from uh, San Francisco to L.A. or to San Diego and back. Mm -hmm. And he told me how much it cost to charge. And it was maybe $20 less than I would have paid for gas. So it just And he had to wait an hour at each time he charged it. So I don't know. And if you do it at home and you charge it at home, you, you have a charger at home, right, uh, uh, Brian? Yes. How much does it jump your electric bill up? I don't know. It doesn't affect it that much. When you when you go on a long trip, we stop at the same places that we stop on the way to LA, anyways, and it's about twenty five dollars from their from their thing. So, okay. but, but it, it's a little bit more saving. I know. But wait a minute! Don't you have it? I know. I know people want to complain about it and and exaggerate some stuff, but mm -hmm. I I know the truth, and and it doesn't take an hour and. An hour. So if you go to the superchargers, it's fast. So. Yeah, but don't you don't you have a Tesla? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, but doesn't Tesla have like free charging? Yeah, they yeah, yes. But you got to find their chargers. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, when we drive from San Jose down, we have to stop at one place that we always stop at anyways to get food. Because whenever we go to LA, I leave, we leave five in the morning, they sleep in the car, and I drive and they wake up about the same time and we get food there. So we charge right there and Mm. Then we go down and we hit another spot, same spot that we usually hit. How long does it take you to do a full <clears throat> charge? I think it's 35 minutes the last time we were there, like 35 <laughs> or 40 minutes. And that's about the, more than enough time for you to have lunch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, well, that's not bad. And everybody has different experiences, but that, that's yeah. when we've done that. I've gone down there like what, four or five times with the car. What's, what's it going to take to make electric cars completely practical? Faster charging times? Yeah. And more I will say one thing. When I went up to Clear Lake, which is about three hours north, mm -hmm. and the last hour is all woods going up to the to the lake and to pick up some parts. And it was at nighttime, and there was only one. I had to really map it out to get the charger before I hit Clear See, Lake. You, you got to do that, but I mean, I was already yeah, I was already like at forty percent when I left the house. So you know, so there are some times if it's not in the regular schedule. That's why I say you know, commute to work and you come back really good for electric but then when you start planning some trips it, it it can be difficult marjorie did you say something no oh i thought you well, i agree with what you follow said. You said i heard that. i heard need more oh, station oh. wait a minute mm -hmm. jeff well i have a car that's part-time gas and part-time electric and it's working out very well mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's the because the price per gallon Used to be like I don't know what thirty five, and it's. But what's know. it going to take to make electric completely practical? Being able to go five hundred miles on a charge, mm. that would do yeah. it. Better batteries. The, the new Tesla is coming out in October in Europe, and then they're going to start taking orders here. Uh, the new battery is four hundred miles, so they are they are working a lot on the battery. It's the same size; it's not any bigger. They're also changing the aerodynamics, so it helps on the miles too. Uh, let me ask you one other thing: yeah. these batteries are lithium-ion, right? Yeah. What are the, uh, how many of them explode? <laughs> I don't know. I, I've seen pictures. Yeah. You've seen Never. pictures. <laughs> they they came out with a calendar. You know, whoever these people don't like electric, they came out with a calendar. Or twelve different pictures of of Tesla's on fire <laughs> battery issues. <laughs> so you can get a calendar, but if you like it, I'll order you one. <laughs> what kind how of car do you gas cars drive? explode? What? So how many gas cars explode? There's yeah. a lot. Only in movies, <laughs> as they're going off a cliff. You know. <laughs> uh, 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 tell me this, uh, Paula. What kind of car do you drive? I drive a Honda HRV, and when I bought it, I bought it a couple of years ago. It's a used car, but uh, um, I thought about a, a hybrid, and I, I, I think I think electric cars are are the thing of the future for sure. Um, I think they'll work it out, you know, because there'll be a demand for it, and and uh, hopefully the government will help because, well, because it's the thing to do. One of my questions about hybrids, or about 
uh, electric, all electric cars, excuse me, mm -hmm. is that they do use up uh, a, a certain amount of energy uh, to, to, to create the electricity. So the question is, uh, aren't we using up a certain amount of, of natural resources to get the electricity to charge the cars? Or am More I wrong? Huh? Less. But less, but to but gas, it's tremendous yeah. loss. Yeah. Or let's ask the astro. Let's ask the astrophysicist here. There you go. <laughs> yeah, you definitely don't. You don't pollute as much with an electric car. Uh, you, you believe me. You have a lot more resources that you use getting gas and gas stations and doing all of that all over the country than you do if just being able to charge your car. And you can charge your car with solar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if they, but they're not making, are they, are they making solar cars? I mean, that's a solar car. I'm saying you could, like, if you have solar panels on your panels. house, you use that to charge your car. You're not mm -hmm. using up any resources. Yeah, Tesla's in that too, right? Tesla has their solar yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, which brings us around to a very interesting question. I was talking with Marjorie last night. One of the few times. Were we were talking? One of the few. No, we weren't talking. Two yes, nights. We're talking? Do you guys text each other when you're in that big apartment? What? <laughs> oh, no, text each other when you're in the big apartment and lazy to get up? Right now, I'm very pissed at her, and I don't have to see her all day if I don't want to. Oh, my God. You guys are lucky. I wish I had that in my house. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll only cost you something like $110,000 in lawyer's fees to be able to do it. But no, I was, I was talking to her the other day, and she said she, they did a thing on the Sunday morning show on Elon Musk. Oh. Uh, and about the, the good things and the bad things about Elon Musk is the guy who did the book on Steve Jobs. I'm trying to remember his name now. Uh, has just done a book on 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 Elon Musk, mm -hmm. and he said he got unfettered uh, access to Musk. Musk said you can follow me around everywhere, and he did that. He said for three years. Imagine having oh, to do that for three, three years. years. Oh, God, you wake up in the morning and there's Elon, you know. But <laughs> he said it, he's he's this contradiction, okay, in which you have to take the good with the bad. You know, there's a crazy part of him that just yeah. wants to create uh, uh, tension and all kinds of things like that. And then there's the Edison part of him that's just brilliant. You know, and you have to take the good with the bad. And uh, Marjorie pretty much said, I'll just take the bad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but Musk is an interesting question because in, the latest thing is he wouldn't he turned off all the satellites that he that he put up in the ukraine that would that would allow the ukraine to uh send missiles to destroy ships mm -hmm. and he said he did it because he felt that allowing them to do that might cause world war three Mm -hmm. So my question Who the is the fuck is he to get involved in, yeah. in politics well no but He's not getting involved in politics. He's involved in the technology. It's the countries that are involved in the politics, and he's got to deter determine if he wants to be part of something that might cause World War III. Yes. He ended up selling the system to the United States, so now he's out of it. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. Yes, did he? Might... yes he did. Oh, he did? So he doesn't what? own he doesn't own Starlink anymore? No. He sold it to the United States. Oh, oh yes. Oh, really? I did not know that. Well, I, I had a different thought, which is it's not so much a problem with the particular genius. It's a problem with everybody else who, when people make that much money, they fall down dead when they walk in the door and they give them all this power and they don't. It's, there's right. no regulation of, of, of this kind of person. And and he's not a he's he's not somebody who could run the world. He doesn't have those kinds well, of skills. Well, I, of course, he doesn't have the skills. And I and I was saying this the other night. I had this call I do with uh, 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 four or three other people 
on, a, on a regular basis. Um, uh, Patrick, Josh, and and Ke and uh, Brian. No, not Brian. Kevin. 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 And uh, we were talking about him and about people like him who gain enough notoriety in business that all of a sudden they become political. When I don't want to know what Elon Musk thinks about things, okay? I don't want him to even mention it or shove it down my throat. And I don't need to know what, uh, uh, who's the guy over at Facebook? Yes, you know, all the, all these different guys. And, and I did mention to them that the one guy who didn't seem to involve himself in politics, because I think he knew better, he knew that he wasn't a political person, was, uh, uh, what's his name, over at Microsoft? Bill Gates. Bill Gates. Yeah. What he did is he spent all his time, his energy, his uh, power at people listening to him to have them listen to him about you know, um, diseases, diseases and things like that. That's fine. You're involving yourself in your, in your bailiwick as it were, but he also has a, a dynamite wife. Melinda Gates is a remarkable woman. Not anymore. He does. Well, oh, divorced. He divorced They're divorced. Yeah. Yeah. They're divorced. Well, he had him. He had anyway. <laughs> he had <laughs> pretty dynamite. But, but. And supposedly, yeah. the rumor was it was because he was cheating. And I would like to see the woman who would cheat yeah. with Bill Gates. Okay. Uh, but I guess if you got money, anybody will have sex with there you. There you go. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I, Bill Gates handled himself rather well. I mean, he, he handled himself even better than Steve. Everybody went, oh, Steve Jobs, how wonderful Steve. But Steve Jobs never did a damn thing in the public sector to help it. You know, whereas Bill Gates said, I'm going to give 98% of every penny I make to good causes. That's it. You know, mm -hmm. and you got to give that a little credit, right? Yeah, we we do. We got a lot of funding from Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for um, for Africa. So we're doing TB testing, and they helped us with the research for that. And then uh, we sell it to them really, really cheap. And then we're allowed to sell it to whoever we want for whatever price we want. Oh, okay. It's it's a that's a good deal. Yeah. yeah, very good. But I mean, it it it's terrific um, that some of these people know to keep their mouth shut, but sometimes they don't. Okay. Uh, you know, I don't want to know what Jeff Bezos thinks politically, although you don't hear much of him on political stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. But he builds so, those damn rockets that look like penises, and that. <laughs> <laughs> what about like in the past, like like a guy like a Ross Perot or a, a Michael Bloomberg, who like they put themselves into that arena. They say, I've got business acumen, I've got ideas, I've got these things. So now I'm going to try and help and serve in the yeah, but, but Bloomberg, public sector that for instance, way. Bloomberg, uh, you know, yeah, he gave a lot of money to political things, but he pretty much kept his mouth shut about it. Didn't, didn't he become a mayor? Was, he, didn't he, he was mayor of New York three terms. That's pretty good political. Good ones and one bad one. Um, <laughs> no, I never, never give anybody three terms. They just don't know what to do with the third term, except think that everybody loves them. Uh, but I mean, uh, uh, Bloomberg though does wonderful things with his money. He just built a a performing arts uh, place down near uh, Ground Zero. That is amazing. It has it's like three theaters that by just pushing a button, he can make it into one theater or make it into 30 theaters. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, but he put a lot of money into that of his own money. So, you know, he did good work. That's a good example of a guy doing good work and still having politics, but, you know, not shoving it down your throat. Uh, you like him, don't you, Marjorie? Absolutely. Yeah. I really do. How about, how about you, Jeff? You live in the area. How about uh, Mike Bloomberg? I don't know enough about him to make a decision. Really? Really? Yeah. And it's not that I'm being negative about him. Well, uh, I yeah. don't know. Uh, well, let's go to the voice of authority. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah. Edward Berger, you live in the area. Well, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> what do you think of Mike, Mike Bloomberg? I guess he's okay. 
All right. He ain't got nothing. All right. As long as he stays away from my drinks at the movie theaters. That's right. Yes. Well, that was, you know, they, he used to get himself involved in a couple of stupid things. You know, if you're, if you're going to do things to help New York City, what are you going to do? Are you going to stop everybody from drinking sugary drinks? No, it was the large size. The gigantic no, one. No, it was also sugar. And the large size. And the large yeah. size. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. There's still trash in the streets. <laughs> where people don't have homes to live in. I think you, you know, you do something like that. And what you do is you get half the population to say, has he lost his mind? <laughs> <laughs> And that's the trouble with that's the trouble with Musk. Musk did SpaceX. Great, great work. OK, I mean, come on. He took the cost of space travel and trimmed it down to nothing. He's getting it down to where each of those rockets going up is going to cost a million dollars. OK, that's how cheap it's getting. How many how many NS, NSXs could you buy for that? Uh, <laughs> he's he's he, the, the, you know, the Tesla changed the whole nature of the way we build automobiles now. Uh, these are things he did, which were wonderful. And there are a couple other little things, too. Uh, uh, but, Stay away from Twitter. But Twitter? Yeah. Come on. Why even waste your time with Twitter? Mm-hmm. You know, so, I mean, uh, I, I hate to see him waste his time doing that. And I would hate to see him one day drop dead and he will be remembered as the guy who ruined Twitter. <laughs> you know? And not the guy who gave us uh, really a lot of a lot of good stuff. So, you know, I mean, that, that's why I, I can't hate Elon Musk completely, but I think he wastes his time on a lot of stuff. And I think the guy's crazy, genuinely crazy. But you got to be crazy to think out of the box and build a lot of the stuff that he's built and the companies that he's created. I mean, that's in yeah. every arena, too. You look at the craziest musicians out there. And they've got some eccentricities. Some of them are socially normal and some of them aren't. You look like a guy like Prince, you look like a guy like Kanye, um, you know, all sorts of pro- prolific artists in different ways. And they've got personality quirks. Well, I don't, know about, I, don't, I don't know about Kanye because I can't name one thing he recorded. <laughs> well, can, can you? I can, yeah, I can, I can name quite a few things that Kanye recorded. Oh, really? See? Yeah, yeah, he's he's pretty. When you look at the youth of today, or maybe the youth of a generation ago, he's uh, he's quite revered. Well, Marjorie's got me beat on that one because she loves Kanye's work. Oh, come on! <laughs> I, hate him. I can't stand them. I think I think I think Paula, or maybe she said it before, but you know, a lot of these people have yes men are all around them. You know, now, now you add a billion dollars to somebody and they're, yes, man, that'll work, you know, those type of things. They they don't hear the thing like, well, you should say up, you should say out of Twitter. I mean, how many people do you think are closer around him told him, why are you messing around with Twitter? Oh, you know? So he can buy a senator he can, or, or, or five or six. He can buy, you know, it's... People, especially maybe maybe everybody, I was going to say, especially in this country, but it's probably universal. I remember yeah, has, no, somebody has a lot of money is like a god. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You're right. I, I remember Be- Bezos building a rocket and everybody going, oh, he built a rocket. But then if you think about it, and I'll ask Charlie this question, Charlie will know the answer oh. immediately. How many countries have landed? Now, when, years ago, if you'd asked this question, you would have said the United States, and that was it. Mm. How many countries have landed vest, uh, you know, vehicles? On the moon. One, two, three, four. <laughs> I guess it's five. It's five. It's five. India. India just landed. India just landed India, one. Yeah. Yeah. And already they're serving lunch. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's good. Great. I could use some pakora great. right now. Huh? They oh. have memes. <laughs> yeah. Many memes. They have a meme with a 7 Eleven on the moon now. And <laughs> <laughs> I don't condone that. All I'm saying is no, that when you think about it, it, part of what Musk did was make it possible for all these countries to say, we can do it too. You know, if a little company like that can do it, we can do it. China has a space station. All right. 
So, I mean, and ours is almost being put out to lunch because it's, it's have you seen the inside of our space station? Yeah, it's pretty crowded in there. <laughs> it's crummy in there. It's crummy. It looks like a toilet. Have you seen the Chinese? They've got everything tucked away. You know. And they're putting up another uh, space station because with two, you get an egg roll. So, uh, uh, <laughs> boom. And that, wow, what a way to end the show. <laughs> hey, 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 should, should, yeah. uh, I, I got here late. Did we say anything about 9 11 at the beginning of the show? Yeah, yeah. it happened 22 years ago. Yeah. Okay. That yeah, was what it was I, said. Okay. Yeah, I'm, can I say something? I've, you know, I, 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 I'm not, don't mean any degradation towards uh, 9 11, but can't we go five years without doing ceremonies and making a big deal out of it? You know, Every yeah. five years would be okay. Every 10 at a certain point. But, you know, I mean, it just every year, it's like they're ringing the bell. And, da -da 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 -da. and, uh, every, and nobody's, everybody's afraid to say, hey, you know, there's a certain kind of limitation on how long we can pick at this scab. Did they ever do anything like that, like for Pearl Harbor? Pearl Harbor, I'm sure they every year for years, oh, for yeah. five years afterwards, but then they waited till the 10th anniversary and then the 20th anniversary. You know, that I mean, there's a time when you, you, it's not that you forget, but that you move on. You know? I don't forget because that's my birthday. <laughs> happy, birthday. Oh, happy, birthday. happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday. birthday to you. No, no, on December 7th is my birthday. Go to go to kids and ask kids when was Pearl Harbor. Well, yeah, they yeah, won't exactly. even know what you mean. They, they, I, they, I bet you a lot of them don't, don't know the date, the year, maybe know. not even not, not even where it was. Well, they don't know what happened on uh, uh, um, what was it? Uh, uh, yeah, December 8th. But, uh, <laughs> a bunch of Jewish guys attacked Pearl Schwartz. But anyway, uh, uh, you should have went out on top with the last. I should have left on a high point. Instead, I'm leaving on the absolute <laughs> low point of my show business career. Anyway, thank you, to Paula. To after that one. Thank you to Paula. I always appreciate it, Paula. It's nice to have you there. It, it makes me feel good. Same thing with you, with Charlene. There's a reporter over at uh, NBC, the last name of Solos. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, no relation, I'm sure. No. No. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, um, Marjorie, thank you very much. Uh, what's for dinner tonight? You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine it's crow. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say ice cubes. I was kidding. Uh, thanks, Len LaFrisco. Always appreciate you being here. Uh, Brian, uh, delight. Uh, Charlie, we, our science uh, officer here, uh, who knows everything about science that we don't know. Uh, thank you uh, very much to uh, Mike uh, up there in Canada. He's our Canadian friend. Vernon down in Kentucky. Uh, and, uh, of course, Jeff Stein all the way up there in Connecticut. And finally, here are the dulcet tones of Edward <laughs> Berger, who signs us off by saying, That's all, folks. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Thanks, Alex. <laughs> <laughs>